A warm welcome to the 19th session in the third module of Signals and Systems. We have been looking at what happens when you do not quite sample with ideal impulses. And let me quickly summarize the way we have approached the problem. We are going to complete the discussion of what happens in the spectral domain in this session. So, we said that if you had this train of non-ideal pulses, or rather you know pulses that are not quite impulses, but which last for an interval capital delta in the whole sampling interval of T s. So, in every interval of T s, you have this pulse, the pulse lasts for an interval of capital delta. And essentially what you are doing is to take a band limited signal or the signal that you want to sample and multiply it by this periodic waveform. We call this periodic waveform P of t, so to speak, a train of pulses now, not impulses. You see the important thing is that the Fourier transform of this has an appearance like this, we saw that. Obviously, the Fourier transform of P t is again going to have a train of impulses. Any periodic waveform has a train of impulses as its Fourier transform. And the train of impulses that you get in the Fourier transform is obtained by an envelope, which we derived the last time. Essentially, the Fourier coefficients give you the strength of each, of course, this is not a uniform train, please note. By a uniform train, we would mean a train of impulses, all of which have the same strength, but here these impulses do not have the same strength. The strength of the impulses relates to the Fourier coefficients here. So, the impulse strength, so it relates to the Fourier series coefficients. In fact, the situation would be like this on the omega capital omega axis, the angular frequency axis, you would have an impulse line at every multiple of 2 pi by T s. The strength of this impulse would be proportional to C 0, the strength of this one to C 1 and so on. And we also saw the nature of C 0, C 1, C 2 and so on. We saw that C k has the form gamma 0 sink. So, gamma 0 could be the constant sink of k times delta by T s. And of course, you could make gamma 0 depend, you know, you could essentially try and make it independent of delta. I am repeating some of these ideas, you know, you must fix these ideas in our mind it is important to review them from various perspectives. So, you know it is really samples of an envelope. So, I have an envelope like this, a sink envelope and you have samples of this envelope with a spacing of delta by T s. Now, you can visualize the situation. As delta by T s tends to 0, we essentially concentrate around 0. So, all the samples start getting crowded here, but when delta by T s is not 0, we have something interesting. So, with delta by T s not equal to 0, but small enough, how small enough? You know the idea is you want to be able to make use of that main lobe, that is the meaning of small enough. You should not have a situation where you take one sample from the main lobe and then the next sample comes from the side lobe, that is not good for you. You want the first few samples to come from the main lobe. So, small enough so that the first few samples come from the main lobe. Let me zoom this to show you what I mean. So, C 0 is like this, C 1 is like this, so is C minus 1 and then C 2 and so on c minus 2 and this. So, you know the first few samples come from the main lobe. What do you observe? The first few samples have decreasing magnitude. Now, this is going to be important to us, this decreasing magnitude is going to be important to us. So, in fact, 
Now let us write down formally. Let us write a Fourier series expansion. That is very easy to do. It is summation k over all the integers. I am sure you must have now got used to this notation k belongs to the set of integers. And when we multiply x t by p t, what are we getting? We are getting now you see this is a very interesting expression, we can easily take the Fourier transform of this. We can take the Fourier transform term by term. Why can we do that? We can do that because the Fourier transform is linear. So, we can take the transform term by term and then add the terms. Now, what is the Fourier transform of one of those terms? That is very easy to see, it is essentially minor. Of course, we assume the Fourier transform exists, we have agreed to do that. Very easy to do this, very easy to integrate, you can of course, combine the exponential terms. So, you see, suppose the Fourier transform of x t is capital X of omega. What is this expression? This expression is essentially capital X as a function of omega minus 2 pi by T s times k. So, it is as if you have taken the Fourier transform and shifted it by 2 pi by T s times k here. You see that is interesting. X omega shifted by 2 pi by T s times k forward. And of course, remember k can be positive and negative. So, it is associated with the coefficient. So, you see it is very interesting. Each of these terms actually gives you a shifted version of the Fourier transform. Now, you know, you will wonder, in fact, this is exactly what we have been saying all this while. There is nothing new. We have taken the original spectrum and we have shifted it to every multiple of 2 pi by T s and we have added up these shifted versions. That is what we are saying. Let us go back and see. So, you see you want to take the Fourier transform term by term. So, let us take this expansion here. You found the Fourier transform of this and now the Fourier transform of this can be found by simply multiplying by c k. And then you add up all those Fourier transforms taking the summation on all k. So, simple three step process. We have done this step. Now, we multiply that step by c k and then add over all k. Let us do exactly that to obtain the Fourier transform of x t times p t. So, therefore, the Fourier transform of x t times p t is essentially summation k over all the integers c k capital X omega minus 2 pi by T s times k. What are we saying effectively? We are saying shift capital X of omega by 2 pi by T s times k, first step. Of course, forward for every integer k. Multiply the shifted version by c k. Add up all these shifted versions and there you are. That gives you the Fourier transform of x t multiplied by p t. We have now formally said something, which we have been saying by various kinds of illustrations over the last few sessions and in the initial few sessions of this module. We will see more in the next session, we will continue from this point onwards. Thank you.